I, I want to turn the page a second. So um, there's a lot of references to the story of Noah, Noah's Ark. And um, Noah, and you talk about it, is sort of an apocalypse story. Yeah. And um, your primary question in the movie is, is it insane for us to think that anything can last? And when I put that together with an apocalypse story, I can't help but think maybe this is just me being morbid. I don't know. It feels like a lot of us are um, thinking a lot nowadays about a coming apocalypse or the end of the world. And of course, we've always thought about this throughout history. We certainly have. Um, but I also feel like maybe now more than, I don't know, 10 years ago or 20 years ago, we're talking about super pandemics or we're talking about uh, increased geopolitical tensions or we're talking about artificial intelligence, who knows. Um, I'm curious if that's on your mind or your mind when you watch this film, is it insane to think that uh, anything can last? Is it insane to think that humanity uh, can last? And, uh, and what if it doesn't? And how would you feel about that? It's yeah. <laughs> a tiny question. Yeah. Um, I do think uh, somewhere along the way uh, of making this film, I realized that I was seeking a kind of solace. Um, and, and part of it was, was personal and sort of family based, you know, I, you know, I, two, two, two young boys and, and I started wondering about the, the memories that would, that would come, you know, already, immediately memories start disappearing from their early days. And so there were these, this, you know, kind of constellation of questions that emerged as, as a dad about, you know, what, what of our time together would linger in my own mind and then would linger in my, in my, on my phone, you know, for example. Um, and in some sense, the phone or the hard drive, which is just a collection of images and experiences, you know, is, is a, just a proxy for the, for the mind. So I was ultimately concerned about the same thing. But I think I was also seeking a kind of a solace about, yeah, about where, where we are and, um, and how to feel. I, I, I noticed a lot of my friends, um, you know, they sort of suddenly noticed that climate change was like a thing. And, um, and a sort of panic would, would settle in. And I, I don't want to explore that too deeply, but I will say that through the process of exploring geologic time, I found a strange, almost indescribable solace um, that isn't about nothing matters because it all gets washed away or any of those things. Um, I mean, it's not so tidy that I can sort of put it in a phrase and, and sell it in a book at an airport, right? Um, but it was a, but was, but it was a, an emotional response to feeling like human civilization is part of nature. And we, you know, we are struggling with the same things that the natural world deals with all the time, the creation of records and the destruction of records. So we're not crazy to be to be grappling with those things. We're not crazy to notice that, you know, that pandemics strike. We're not crazy to be panicky about those things. But they exist as part of a much deeper story that is really amazing to immerse yourself in. So, and, and that story is, is a lot of what science, you know, concerns itself with. Um, it doesn't always sort of make the, the happy marriage with the humanities to see that like, you know, the same thing is going on. Um, the humanities concerned with kind of the history of ideas and, and, the, the, and the path forward for those ideas and science exploring sort of the archive of nature. You know, these are very, these are similar worlds. And I think that I, I came to find a sort of solace in, um, I don't know, in the story of nature's archive. Yes, uh, to your question about <clears throat> would it be insane to believe that uh, uh, <clears throat> we would have things out in eternity? <clears throat> I wouldn't call it insane, just stupid. 
because we, we know that our existence on this planet is limited in time. The human race, uh, human beings are biologically very, very vulnerable, much more vulnerable than the cockroach uh, <clears throat> or amphibians or whatever, microbes that are after us anyway. So our existence on this planet is very, very, very limited. Uh, however, uh, on the contrary, it is clinically sane to make a film like yours. Uh, because uh, while we are around, while you are around, yeah. to reflect who we are, what we are, uh, where our, what is the meaning of our existence, whatever, curiosity. And of course, <clears throat> when we speak about future films, you, you make your films because we know, you know it, we know there will be a tiny eternity for that film, a very tiny eternity. Uh, and that's fine. Let's be content with that. <coughs> yeah. And last thing I want to ask you about, um, you mentioned being a dad. I'm a dad. Um, Verna, I read, I think you're uh, also a dad. Um, yeah. This movie made me think about parenthood a lot uh, in a way um, what you leave behind has so much to do with your family your ancestors your descendants and one thing one of my favorite things about this movie is the theme of family is all over it but it's not actually talked about very explicitly it, and, and there's a lot of um, Rhetoric and you know, uh, d direct sort of discussion of ideas in the movie, but ideas of family are all left implicit, left for us to. I I loved sort of putting the pieces together about your relationship with your parents, your relationship with your siblings, your relationship with your children. You you hardly talk about it very explicitly, but I'm getting to observe it throughout the movie. Um, and it, it really goes so nicely with the central questions that you're asking more explicitly. Um, so that's just one thing I wanted to compliment you on, but I, I guess I'm curious, as, as uh, parents yourselves, how do you uh, view parenthood in, in light of these questions of what you leave behind? Do you view parenthood as a creative process do you view parenthood as like, oh, this is this is part of what I'm leaving behind, or um, or or is is that sort of uh, almost too self oriented to think that my children are are uh, are something that I am making? Um, I these are questions I am still uh, wrestling with or playing with all the time. So I'm I'm actually just really curious to hear what both of you as parents uh, think of those things. Uh, let's stick to, to you and your film. I like how it's interwoven, not making a big deal, but it can sense, yeah, it's an important part. Um, and it's beautiful how uh, your family, family history is interwoven because it comes so naturally and it is, it's not propagated, it's, it's not an issue, it's, it's a natural, uh, natural habitat of your film, the natural habitat of the uh, of the forests that are property of your uh, family around, and you place the, uh, the the ark there, and and family is naturally interwoven in it, mm. and I really like that. I have almost forgot how uh, great a quality that is. Mm. I have not seen it in films. So far, you see fa families in, uh, as part of a movie, but they make such a big deal out of it, and it, it just uh, I find it sickening. <laughs> and, and, uh, uh, and when you look at Hollywood movies, uh, it's always let's say uh, uh, a man uh, uh, does a trip to Paris, and his wife and his children, his two children and they are abducted and this and that and the other and at the end it has to be small family values big arguments and if it's not there you don't have a happy end family values 
as in the film industry is an abomination. <laughs> I don't know what I can say after that. I mean, I, I, uh, <laughs> the big huggings, yeah. I mean, I, um, I have, uh, I mean, I've been criticized as a person for not being uh, very transparent about my personal life. Um, and Come on, why should you be in a movie? <laughs> be personal no, no. in your, be transparent in your family and I mean, with your friends. Or, or sort of, you know, and, and, uh, and I think this film is, is, uh, is an expression of my exploration of my relationship to, to these questions. And a lot of it is happening for me personally, just kind of behind the scenes or in my journals or in the process of making this film. But I, I agree with Werner, like the, the, the product that I wanted to make. And it's a wasn't sick big demand that you are not showing, daring your soul. How stupid is that? Just dismiss this kind of, 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 of criticism. No. <laughs> Well, yeah, I, uh, just, just no. outright stupid. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think I should leave it there. Yeah. Um, thank you so much for being here.